Thank you, Paul, for the introduction. All right. So it takes one still day in one of the world's largest cities to end up with a scene like this. And I don't know about you guys, but this isn't really when I, what I want to see out my window in the mornings. Uh, we've allowed emissions to accumulate and their effects have become very noticeable. So promoting the role that natural gas and LNG can play in delivering a cheaper and a cleaner energy for the world really doesn't have to be difficult. The reduced emissions, the relatively low investment cost, and some of the new market opportunities make natural gas really sell itself. Coal is used in 41% of the world's power generation facilities and is one of the worst offenders when it comes to emissions. Um, in comparison to a coal-fired power plant, a natural gas-fired power plant will actually reduce carbon dioxide emissions by nearly 50%. Nitrogen oxide by nearly 80% virtually eliminate sulfur dioxide and completely eliminate mercury uh, emissions. So it's clearly a cleaner alternative, and government bodies around the world are starting to take note of that. Uh, in Europe right now, they are pushing the large combust combustion plant directive, which will limit the emissions on facilities with a thermal capacity of 50 megawatts or greater. Uh, those facilities that can't meet the requirements are going to be closed for operation by 2015. The directive, if fully implemented, estimated um, preventing 13,000 premature deaths per year just due to the reduced emissions. 13,000, it's a huge number. Not only will it reduce the premature deaths, but it's also expected to force around 25% of Britain's power generating facilities to close because they can't meet the requirements. So that leaves them with an energy gap that's gonna have to be filled with a cleaner, a proven, and a reliable source like natural gas. So we've determined that natural gas is cleaner. The real question, is it cheaper? On a day in September in the United States last year, one gallon of diesel fuel was $3.95. One diesel gallon equivalent of LNG, $2.87. Difference of $1.10 per gallon. For long haul trucking and shipping companies like FedEx, UPS, Conway, this is an enormous amount. They burn through a ton of fuel every year, and this could completely change their economics. Not only is uh, natural gas cheaper when it comes to LNG for transportation, but there's a company called Clean Energy who has recently become the largest provider of LNG in North America. They currently have around 360 fueling stations at which 30,000 vehicles fill up per day. They're estimated to add another 150 stations over the course of the next two years. Uh, creating what they're calling America's natural gas highway. So it's a cheaper alternative when it comes to transportation. It's also a cheaper alternative when it comes to building the power generating facilities. Studies show that a natural gas fired power plant in conventional combined cycle is gonna cost around $1,000 per kilowatt of capacity to construct. A coal fired power plant around $2,500, nuclear around 4,000, and a solar plant proposed in Florida was recently estimated to be around $6,600 per kilowatt of capacity. Six times the cost of a natural gas fired power plant. It's just not economically feasible right now. Uh, natural gas is a great option as a bridge fuel to replace things like coal and oil uh, until some of these renewable sources like wind or solar become economically feasible. So it's cleaner, it's cheaper, and let's be honest, we all know it's the energy of the future. Natural gas demand has gone up by nearly 100 billion cubic feet per day. With a B, billion. It's a huge number and we have to come up with a way to keep up with that demand because it continues to grow. So the question is how do we as an industry keep up with that type of demand and expand fast enough? And the answer is innovation. We have to be willing to create our own market opportunities and figure out how to serve all of our customers. Paul mentioned that I've been working on the Caribbean uh, FLNG project for Exmar Pacific Rubialis. And it's really an interesting project. It's under construction right now in China with an estimated completion date of late this summer. Uh, it should be starting up first quarter of next year. And it'll be dry towed to Columbia, South America. So whenever you're looking at uh, the, uh, the change from China to Colombia, South America, we're moving that facility halfway across the world. 
the portability of some of these floating units is really an economic benefit. We can take advantage of the low labor cost in China while still moving the barge to its in-location and gas source in Colombia, South America. Floating LNG is a great alternative for companies that don't want to take the large risk of a baseload plant. Um, and it has a lot of flexibility not only in construction, but also whenever you've actually started the barge. They do have the flexibility to move to another source, though the liquefaction process would likely have to be adjusted for the new gas source. It can be done, and the majority of your capital expense has already been covered. So it allows your company to pay for one plant, one time, and use it in multiple locations. The FLNG projects right now have a very quick time to market of three to four years from proposal to startup. So right now with the industry booming, we have to get moving. So four years is a pretty impressive timeline to have those projects up and running. And they give us the ability to reach all the stranded resources that natural gas is typically found in. Um, typically natural gas is found in a sparsely populated area, which leaves you with a large supply and nearly no demand. So these floating units allow you to get to your supply, liquefy it, and conveniently ship it to your demand. So liquefaction on a floating unit is something that's fairly new, but it's offering a quick time to market, a relatively low investment cost, and the portability that a typical baseload plant can't give you. So I'd like to take a minute here and thank GasTech and the Young Engineers Foundation for allowing me this opportunity. Uh, this isn't something that I would typically be able to do, and it's been such a great learning experience. I hope that you all, along with myself, continue to support Gas Tech's student programs as well as the Young Engineers Foundations, because it's really something that can help our industry as we grow. So let me leave you with this. It's our responsibility as the natural gas industry to spread the information necessary for investors and governing bodies to make informed decisions. Natural gas is a cleaner energy with potential markets worldwide. The infrastructure has to continue to grow in order to keep up with the market demand that we're seeing right now. And the only way that it can grow is if we find the investors to support it. By making the benefits of natural gas clear, then we can unearth those investors. We have to explain to the public how much cleaner, how much cheaper, and how many opportunities there are in natural gas because we can make the world a cleaner, a more efficient, and a healthier place. And you'll see this outside of your window instead of that picture that I showed you earlier. We as an industry are how you promote natural gas as a cleaner and a cheaper alternative. It's up to us. We have to convince the public, be proud of what we do, be proud of our industry, and be confident with it, and spread that confidence to the rest of the world. Thank you.